In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a fillable PDF. We're going to add a text field, two text fields to be exact, a text area field, check boxes, radio buttons, drop down, and a signature field. We're going to do this all for free, and we're going to do it step by step in this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. Now let's get started. So the first thing we need is an actual PDF that we can fill out. I created this one in Canva really quickly. I just added a headline. Just go to text, click on add headline, type in whatever you want to call it. There's your headline. Then I made a subheadline for this. All the text you see on the page is just the subheadline copy and pasted. And then for these lines, I just added some lines under elements. Just add the line element, made it the right size. I changed the width of it using the line height option here, scaled it down, and made it just the size I wanted for first name and last name. And then I used lines as well for the address box because when you add this one here, the border is too big. And you can't shrink it down. You can't shrink the border. There's no option for border shrinking in the free version. Might be in the paid version, but for the free version of Canva, I couldn't get this border to be the right size. So I made this four different lines. And I just lined them up into a rectangle. And the border does scale down if you scroll, go down really small, which I found out later. So I could have used that box for the check boxes, but I actually used, I scaled this one down. So I just selected the whole thing and then I scaled it down and then rearranged it. So it was a square for these ones. Even though I could have used this one, I didn't realize the border shrinks as you shrink it down. And then for the radio buttons, I just added the circle, shrunk it down to the right size, put the radio buttons where they have to go. The type of website is going to be a drop down in the fillable PDF. And then we have a signature field as well, which I have made the same way as the address box, just four lines connected into a rectangle. And so when we make the fillable PDF, we're going to have a text field for first name, last name, a paragraph field or a text area for the address, check boxes, radio buttons, a drop down, and a signature field. So I think that's pretty solid. And once we have this made in Canva, this is the free version of Canva, like I mentioned, we just go to download and from the file type, we choose PDF standard or PDF print, depending which one you want. If you have graphics and things that need to look good when printed, you're gonna have to go to print quality. But for most contracts and things like that, I'm pretty sure standard PDF is just fine. Click on download and it downloads it. Let's open this in our finder. And there it is, our service contract. Let's preview it, there's all the fields Let's actually open this in Previewer. And we see none of these fields are fillable or clickable or anything. They're just pictures or just elements on a page. So let's close that and let's make it fillable. I found this free PDF editor, DocFly. You can do three PDFs a month for free. And when you're doing contract PDFs like this, you likely only have to do one every once in a while or even only when you update your contracts. So. This is definitely good enough for most people. If you do have to do more than that, you can get a subscription and you can do lots and lots. But if you're gonna pay for it, there are better options than DocFly for a paid PDF fillable form creator. But for a free version, this one works pretty great. I'm gonna drag and drop my PDF into here. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And here it is right here. And we can now add things to it. We can add a bunch of different things inside DocFly. We're gonna focus specifically on the fillable form options. So let's go to form creator right here. And let's click on text field. And let's click right here. There's our text field. Let's make it a bit bigger. So it's the length of the line. And there's our text field. Unfortunately, in some programs, like specifically the previewer on Mac, this will not be blue and it won't have a border when you hover. It'll just be blank white. And that makes it really hard to fill out because you can't intuitively see that it's a fillable PDF. Whereas when you see a field like this, you think, oh, that's something to click on. 
even if people don't even know what fillable PDFs are, they might click on it and realize they can fill it out. So I like to add colors to this. I'm gonna change the background color to be lighter than that, a light blue, that's probably good. I'll give it a border of darker blue, make the border width one, and there we have our fillable field, our first one. Now I'm gonna add another text field. I'm gonna put it right there. You see the size is already the same size as the one we just made. Instead of the default size it gave us the first time, so it learned what we want and even set the background color, border color, and border width. So we don't have to do that again. Let's use a paragraph field. Let's put it right here. This one, we do have to set those things again because it's a different field type. If we just had these text fields, it would be super simple. You just set the first one, define it how you want it, and all the rest are loaded in like that every time you add a new text field. For background color, let's choose this one. Border color, I think, was this one. Border width was one. That background color is not right. Is it this one? Yeah, there we go. Now we have an address field, and this one's a multi-line field. So they'll be able to enter more than one line, which is the idea of a larger box like this for the address. For the checkbox field, just click on that and place it where it needs to go. I'm gonna put it right there. And you can shrink it down so it fits inside of your box. This isn't really necessary, but might as well so zoom in a bit. There we go. Let's give this a background color as well. And a border color. I'm not gonna add a border width in this case because we already have a border around the outside with our box there. I'm gonna add a new check field, or checkbox field, sorry, and I'm gonna put it right in there. Everything's set already the way we did the first one. So whenever you add a new field, you wanna make sure you set it exactly how you want it, and then every subsequent field of the same type will have those things automatically set for you. So there we go. Now we have our services checkbox, and they can check multiple of these. That's the definition of a checkbox. Down here, we're gonna have a radio button, so they can only check one or the other. Let's click on the radio field. Let's make choice one, renewal and choice two, new underscore customer. Gonna keep the alignment as vertical and click okay. And we're gonna put the first one right there. And so our options are renewal or are you renewing services or are you a new customer? And that's why I chose those options. You can change these afterwards by just clicking on the radio button, changing the value right here, clicking on the other radio button, changing the value right here. And once they're on here, you can resize them and get them right inside that little circle. There we go, that's pretty good. Now we have our radio buttons. They can only select one or the other. So the program, you saw when we added the radio field, it has us enter choices. So we can enter five or 10 or 15, however many you have, they can only select one of them. And that's why it adds them in this fashion instead of the way we did the other fields where you just click to select the field type and you click wherever you want the field to add that field and they're not dependent on each other. That's why we have to do the radio button a little differently because they are dependent on each other. The drop down field is gonna go right here. Let's make it a little wider. We add our options on the right. Let's add blog or website type, e-commerce, brochure, and now we have our drop down done. I'm going to also make the background color like the others. Give this one a border like the others. And for drop down boxes, I often like to add an option. That's not really what I want them to select. Something like, please select. So they need to do something and they know they need to do something. Whereas if it's just blog selected, they might think, oh, it's a blog and then I even change it. And we don't want that. Click on sort choices to sort them alphabetically and it puts the ones with the dashes at the front. Allow custom choice. I'm not quite sure what that does. Allow custom choice makes the drop down look a lot nicer. By default, it looks like this. And allow custom choice looks much more designed and much nicer. And you also have the ability to allow empty choice if you want to allow that. We could also make it required. I'm not sure what that does. Maybe it doesn't allow you to save the file without that being selected. These ones don't, or oh, they do have the required option. Let's make them all required. Not these ones, but first name, last name and address. These ones don't need to be required because they might choose one or the other. One of the radio buttons has to be required, type of website has to be required. And then for the signature, we add the signature field. Let's just throw that right in there. Scale it up to the right size. Let's change our colors again. No border because we have the box to go on the border. 
And at this point, you can also add your own signature. So if this was one of those contracts where you have your signature field or your bosses or whoever, and then on the other side has the customer signature field or down below, you can create two signature fields and one you can pre-fill with your own digital signature. You can type it in here, for example, Frank, you can choose your font, you can draw it in, or you can upload your own image file or digital ID right here. I'm just gonna keep this as a field that someone has to sign. And now our fillable PDF is done. We've done, we've done all the settings we need to make this PDF fillable. Now we click on save, and then we click on export, download. I did one earlier today as a test run. That's why I only have two credits left. When you do this, you have three, you get three per month. Click on download file. So you don't wanna to make too many mistakes and you have to wait another month to get your contract done. But if you do it carefully, those three should be just fine, especially when you're just doing one-off contracts like this. If you're doing lots of contracts, you're probably bringing in a lot of money. And so spending five bucks a month or 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever per month on a legit PDF creator like Adobe Acrobat Pro, it would be worth your money. So let's open this one, our fillable one, and we see our nice fillable field. So let's compare it to our original. Here's the original, can't fill it. Here's the new one, you can't fill it. It doesn't have a cursor though, I liked it. When I click in here, now you can see something's happening, but I like there to be, all right, that one has hover. That one has hover now that I've put text in it. Anyway, I like to be able to click in here and have it show something like a cursor. Let's just fill this out. Frank Jones, my house is my home for the address. Very good. For services, we can check boxes or not check them, whatever we want. For radio button, we can only check one or the other. And this one, even though we applied a background color, I think we did anyway. Yeah, we applied, a, no, we didn't. I messed that up, you guys let me miss that. So there's no background color visible, but at least we have these circles here, so people know they have to do some selecting here. Type of website, drop down, brochure, e-commerce, please select, so you gotta pick one of those. We're gonna select blog. And in the previewer that we're using here, you see the signature field doesn't actually work. It, it knows there's a field there, but it doesn't know what to do with it. And so if you have your customers filling out these forms, you're gonna to have to tell them and be very specific to use specific software to fill these out if there's a signature required. The other fields all work in pretty much all programs, but only some programs can use the signature field properly. Let's just save what we have here and I'll show you the free version of a program I use. I'm sure you've heard of it. Adobe, Adobe Acrobat Reader. There's a download page here somewhere. And this is it right here. Get.adobe.com forward slash reader. And you can get the free version. You can also upgrade to the pro. You probably want the pro version if you do lots of contracts because you can create fillable PDFs super easily inside the software and you can have them signable and you can even track the signing. So if there's multiple people who have to sign, you can track to see who's signed, who hasn't. You can do all of that inside your Adobe Pro Using free versions for lots of contracts is not recommended. But for one-off contracts like we're doing here, the free version is just fine. This is it right here. It works on Mac and Windows. Click on download, install it. So I can go back to my finder here. I'm gonna right click on the one we filled out. We can see we saved it, it's already filled. And then open with Adobe Acrobat Reader. Here they can edit the fields as well. So you don't have to fill it out inside of a different program than sign it here. If you are sending contracts to be signed, then you should recommend that people use them or view them in Adobe Acrobat Reader, the free version or the pro version if they have it. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, we see the signature field and we see a little signature icon right here. Usually this is a lot bigger in signing software, but we can see this is a field that needs to be signed. We click on it click on configure digital ID. They can use a signature creation device. They can use a digital ID from a file. They can also create a new digital ID. Whatever option works for them. Let's just create a new one. Let's save it to a file on the computer. Let's use my name, Canada, if you can find it. Gotta find it manually. There it is. Key algorithm over my head. Use digital ID for digital signatures, data encryption. Uh, why not both? Sure organizational unit, enter an email, and then continue. I'm gonna save this 
into this folder right here. You can change that folder by clicking Browse, and it's gonna create a password. This is the password you can use every time you have to use the digital ID, which is a good idea because a digital ID means that you're signing. It's essentially a signature. It's a valid signature. So you wanna make sure it's password protected. I'm gonna click back because I'm not gonna follow through with this because I already have a digital ID, but that's how they would create one if they don't have one or they'd use one of those options to be able to just add one they have already. And that's probably why the Mac Previewer couldn't do the signature field because it has to have that digital signing capability which Adobe has. Other software has it as well, but this is just a free piece of software you can use right on your computer. And lots and lots of people have this installed on their computers already because Adobe has for years kind of been the standard in PDFs. So Adobe Reader is super common on computers. So your clients probably already have it installed. But once that's signed, they can just save. We didn't change anything, so let's change something here. And they can save. Right up here we see the save button is available once we change something. And then that saves it right on their hard drive inside of their finder here. Let's go look at it. Because we used to have not all these boxes checked. And now if we open this, we do have them all checked. And if they added the signature, that'll be saved now as well. Then they can just email it back to you. If you had the pro version of Adobe Reader, then they'd sign it in here. They click save. They'd click upload then it'd be sent directly to you. They don't have to have the paid version of Adobe Pro, but you do to make that happen. They just have to receive the document, open it, sign it, and then send it back to you. They don't have to mess around with attaching PDFs to emails and all that stuff. Whereas this free version, they do have to mess around with that. So now that we have this finished PDF, you could have a form on your site where they could submit it. You could also just have them email it to you. So it just depends on how you want to do it but you now have a fillable PDF that you created for free. And you can also upload this to your media library if you wanted to. Let's just do that. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Head over to the media library, click on add new, and then we upload this one we have. You wanna upload one you haven't filled out already. So you wanna make sure you, this is the blank one you'll be uploading. We just upload that. Once it's uploaded, click on copy URL to clipboard. Let's just open that URL and we see the PDF right here. And you'll also notice when it's on the internet in a browser like this, it is editable. So they could fill this out right in here and then think they're doing the right thing, but they're not because this will not be saved. If they fill this out, then click download, it's gonna be blank again. So you need to be very clear in your instructions to your customers that they have to download the PDF to their computer first and then edit it and then save it while they're editing it so they don't lose whatever they entered in here. Do not have them do it in the browser because that will not work. And also the signature will not work in the browser. Again, you need to use software like Adobe Acrobat. There are others as well that are online, but they're all subscription-based. Adobe Acrobat is one of the best free ones that you can use for having your customers add signatures. One last thing I wanted to test is we had these fields be required, all of them. So if I just delete what's in here, try to save it, it still saves. So I'm not sure what that required button actually does. These were required, it still saves. So I don't know what that's about. But anyway, it does have that required field on the right here. I'm not sure what it does, but it's there. Anyway, maybe don't rely on this field for making things required. I'll just tell your customers to fill out all the fields in your PDF. Next up, check out this tutorial right here where we show you how to embed PDFs on your WordPress site. Because once you have a signable PDF, you might want to add it to your site. But also make sure you tell your customers that they have to download the PDF and then fill it out and then save it and then send it back to you. Because if they fill it out right on the site, it's not going to work. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I'll see you in the next video.